I want to show you a MATLAB feature called cell mode which is a way of partitioning your scripts into little regions and then running them individually. So a, a cell is created by putting a double percent sign at the beginning of the line uh, like you see here and then writing a little description, a little heading uh, for your own benefit of uh, what that cell is. Now because this line begins with a percent it's a comment so it will be ignored by MATLAB which means that you're free to write whatever text you like in here. Basically, whenever I'm uh, inside, my, my editor cursor is inside a particular cell, that region is highlighted, as you can see here. And so if I have my cursor inside a particular cell and I want to run the code which is in that cell and just that cell only, I can use this button here which says Evaluate Cell. Uh, also, the shortcut is Control Enter. So if I click that, notice that this line of code was run over here in the command window. Let's do that again. I'm pressing Control Enter. And I can run that as many times as I want. And I can jump around and then run this cell, maybe then this one, this one a couple of times, and then this one. So that gives you a, a convenient sort of way to try out uh, different pieces of your code if you only want to run just a small section of it for testing and development purposes. I'm going to give you three examples of vectorizing code so you can get a bit of a feel for how it works. And so the first one here is vectorizing a for loop and the task specifically that we're going to do is this to generate random numbers between 0 and 2. So I know about the rand function in MATLAB so if I actually click on that function here in my code and press F1 it brings up this uh, little help for that function so that's quite a convenient little shortcut to know about. So this is the description of the rand function. Basically if I read down to here it says that randn returns a matrix containing pseudo random numbers drawn from the standard uniform distribution on the open interval 0 to 1. So if I want numbers between 0 and 2 and what I've got is numbers between 0 and 1 then you know, I can just double them. right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to generate 10 random numbers in a 10 by 1 matrix which is actually a vector because it's uh, only a single row, uh, a single column I should say, and uh, put them in the, the vector over here called x. And then I'm going to use a for loop. Why for loop? Because I know in advance how many items there are in my vector. Go through and double each one. So the uh, index item inside x is that item times 2. So how could we write that as vectorized code? Uh, maybe pause the uh, screencast and have a go at that one yourself. So uh, what I'm going to do is just comment out this uh, thing here. That was uh, Control R that I pressed. The opposite is Control T. So you can comment out blocks of code. And I'm going to replace that with the vectorized version. And it's pretty straightforward. x equals 2 times x. And what that will do is just double so times 2 multiplication by scalar inside there. Pretty straightforward, right? Moving on to example two, uh, vectorizing a function evaluation. And so the task here, evaluate this quadratic uh, over this range. So this is how we do it. We use linspace to generate 100 numbers between negative 10 and positive 10. And we pre-allocate uh, a vector called result, which is to be the same size as our input value, and just fill it with zeros. And then we go through a for loop. Uh, we pull out a variable little x. Remember that variables in MATLAB are case sensitive. So little x is a different variable to capital X uh, to be the current item that we're looking at. And then evaluate the function and stick it back into our result vector. So how would we do that? Uh, as a, before, probably a good idea if you want to uh, pause that and have a go at it yourself. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the code I had before and write out the vectorized version. So we can jump straight to result equals and we can put in our quadratic. Being careful to use the dot operation here because we're writing vectorized code 3 times x minus 2. Okay, so you might be wondering why it is that I was able to use the standard multiplication here instead of the dot times operator. And that's because I'm multiplying by a scalar. And so it's okay to put dots in here. It's actually going to uh, achieve the same result. 
So if you prefer, you can just put the dots everywhere that you have multiplication, division, and uh, the power operator when you're writing vectorized code. So the final one here is uh, vectorizing an array reduction. And so the task is to sum up the integers from 1 to 10. And so I've written this code here. We start by generating the numbers that we want to sum up. We have a, a counter variable which begins at 0. And then at each iteration through the loop, we take the counter, what it was previously equal to, and then add in the current number that we're looking at to that list. So how would we go about vectorizing that? You might want to uh, have a go at that one yourself. So if I comment out this code, you might be aware that there's actually a sum function in MATLAB which will take the sum of uh, the vector that you pass into it and simply return that result. And so here is where I've got to be a little bit careful because when I wrote the code previously, I used a variable called sum and now I want to use a function called sum. And so you might remember from lectures that actually if I have a variable which has the same name as a function which I want to use, then the variable will be the one that will be used rather than the function. So what I have to do over here in my command window is actually get rid of my variable called sum. So I do clear sum so that now I have access to the function instead. And I'm going to call the output result instead of sum. Obviously, I can't have, if I had this, right, that would work once the first time and then the second time through, there'd be trouble because I would have created a variable with the same name as a function. So I'm going to call it simply result. And 